Good morning, committee, and welcome to any member of the public during the 1st of February 2022 meeting of the Western and Southern Area Planning Committee, which is one of the three area based planning committees of the Dorset Council. Our area of remit covers the previous Weymouth and Portland Borough Council and most of the previous West Dorset District Council areas. <coughs> Excuse me. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Council has had to put in place measures to enable the Council's decision making process to continue whilst keeping safe members of the public, councillors and council staff in accordance with the government's guidance on social distancing. As the regulations allowing decisions to be made at committee meetings from remote locations have now expired, the Council has decided that the committee will continue to meet remotely and make a minded to resolution with an officer delegated to make the formal decision. The officer will make their decision, decision immediately after the committee has voted on each item and will give reasons if their decision differs from the minded to resolution. Therefore, this meeting is being live streamed to the public and a copy of the recording will be available on the Council website following the meeting. Members of the public are invited to make written representations provided they are submitted to democratic services by 8.30 no later than two working days before the meeting. These representations will take the form of written statements of no more than 450 words with no attachments and will be read out at, at the committee meeting by our administration assistant. For the benefit of the public, my name is Councillor David Shortell, Chairman of this Area Planning Committee, and my Vice Chairman is Councillor Bill Pipe. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, members. Good morning, members of the public. <coughs> Introducing other members of the committee, Councillor Dave Bowell. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you. Councillor Kelvin Clayton. Good morning, Kelvin. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, all. Councillor Susan Cocking. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Susan. Susan. Councillor Jean Lunseth. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Vice Chair and all. Thank you. Councillor Nick Arlen. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning to you. Councillor Paul Kimber. Good morning, uh, Paul. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Chair and everybody. Good morning. Councillor Louis O'Leary. Good morning, Louis. Good morning, Chairman. Councillor Kate Weller. Good morning, Kate. Good morning. Good morning to you. Councillor Sarah Williams. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everybody. And finally, Councillor John Worth. Good morning, John. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. For information, officers involved in the meeting include <coughs> Anna Lee, she is the service manager, Anne Collins, Western and Southern Area, Man Area Manager, Emma Telford, Senior Planning Officer, Susan Hedrington, Transport Development, Laura Altry, Solicitor, Jenny Williams, Technical Officer, and, uh, and uh, uh, Jenny will be reading the representations received from members of the public, and Denise Hunt, who's the Democratic Service Officer. We now go on to the agenda. Item one on the agenda, is apologies. Do we have any apologies, Denise? No apologies, Chairman. Thank you. Item two on the agenda, declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of an in a peculiarity or other conflict of interest, bias or predetermination regarding any item on the agenda? Councillor O'Leary, Chairman. Thank you. Um, yeah, on the item relating to Waterside Holiday Park, um, I believe I am predetermined and made comments to that effect. So therefore, I will not be taking part in the vote or debate. OK, Louis, that's fine. Thank you for that. We have any other um, declarations of interest? Good. I would like to inform the committee and members of the public that because this is an informal meeting of the committee, which can only make minded to resolutions. We are unable to approve the minutes of the regular meeting held on the 6th of January 2022. This will be done at the next formal meeting. 
Item three on the agenda is public participation. The committee receives a number of written representations submitted in accordance with the amended speaking protocol effective from the 20th of July 2020. That is the first three public statements received in objection. The first three in support, including the applicant or agent, will be read out by officers not involved in the application. This number does not include representations received from town and parish councils or by relevant Dorset councillors. The written statements has been circulated to all members of the committee prior to this meeting. I would like to draw the committee's attention to an update sheet which they should have received um, yesterday or this morning uh, related to the item on the agenda. Item four on the agenda is planning applications. We have one planning application before us today for consideration. 4A is WP 20 00756 4 FUL, and that's Waterside Holiday Park, Bowley's Coveway, Weymouth, DT 3 6 PP. And that's the extension and improvement to Waterside Holiday Park comprising use of land for the siting of timber lodges for holiday use, outdoor recreation and play areas, associated access and parking, landscaping, planting and infrastructure. Now I now invite Emma Telford, who is the case officer, to introduce this item. Over to you, Emma. Morning, Chair. Morning to you. I will just share my presentation. Can I just check you can see the presentation? Yes, we yes, can. We can. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. <clears throat> um, so yes, this application is at Waterside Holiday Park, Bowley's Coveway, Weymouth. Um, and on that update sheet mentioned, there is an additional consultation response from the economic development team um, and an additional third party comment received as well. Uh, so the first slide is an aerial photograph of the site and surrounding area. Um, so you've got Waterside Holiday Park here, um, which is accessed off of Bowley's Coveway down here. Um, you've got the Riviera, Riviera Hotel. Um, you've got a seasonal campsite at Uli's Farm over here. Um, you've got the existing Haven Holiday Park to the north. Um, and then the application site subject to this um, committee is in here and here, adjacent to the existing Waterside Holiday Park. The next slide shows you a location plan. So again, you've got the access off Bowley's Coveway going through the existing site um, with the application site here and here. Uh, so the next slide is showing um, a site wide plan. Um, you've got the proposed 31 lodges that you can see here, um, each with associated parking um, adjacent to the units. And then this piece of land here is proposed to be a nature wildlife area and the area to the south an ecological mitigation area. Um, the original scheme as submitted also included holiday pods within this nature wildlife area, um, which is part of the application. The process of the application have been removed, so it is these 31 um, lodges. The next slide shows kind of a more um, focused plan on um, area A, which is the proposed 31 lodges um, in a scattered formation with parking and planting and gaps in between the lodges. And then this nature wildlife area that does include uh, a nature walk proposed to go um, around it. <coughs> and then the ecological mitigation area, um, which does involve some play park facilities in here. And then again, also a, a walkway 
to the north of that area there. Um, the next slide shows some proposed enhancement planting. Um, you can see here some proposed enhancement planting within the existing Waterside Holiday Park um, as shown on that plan. And then the next slide shows um, some of the that shows the designations of the local plan. I just wanted to draw your attention in particular to um, the green and blue lines over here, which shows obviously the application site and the relationship to the AOMB and the Heritage Coast. Um, so it doesn't fall within those designations, but it is obviously within the setting of those. And then you have also got the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Site to the south of the application site as well. Um, so this first site photo um, is taken from the south um, and you can see the application site in here. Um, these structures would be removed um, and then the proposed holiday lodges would be on this half of that field there and then you've got that nature wildlife area um, on that half there. Um, and then these next photos um, are again closer up of the, the proposed lodge site itself. Um, so you can again just see a glimpse of the structures to be removed and then obviously the proposed lodges would be <coughs> in the foreground here. Um, so an LVIA was submitted as part of the application. Um, the, this next slide shows the kind of the, the three viewpoints used. Um, so you've got viewpoint three, which is from the is from the south and is on the southwest coastal path. You've got view nine from the west and Jordan Hill and view 10 um, from the north and Winslow Hill. Um, First up, we're going to look at view nine, which is that view from the west. Um, so this is the existing view um, from that west location. Um, just to pick out some things, you can see obviously the Riviera Hotel here. And then you can see the existing Waterside Holiday Park in here. And then the location of the proposed lodges and that wildlife nature area is out here. Um, so the next slide shows the proposed development at year one. Um, it does also show the seasonal camping I mentioned at Yuli's farmway, which you, farm which you can see here. Um, but the proposed lodges are in here with the that wildlife nature area beyond in there. And then we've got the same viewpoint at proposed year 10, um, which obviously shows the, the planting more established there, but again, that's the site in there. Um, and then the next viewpoint we're going to look at is from the north, um, viewpoint 10. Again, this is showing the existing view. Um, so you can see the that Haven site in here, um, and obviously Waterside Holiday Park in here. And the proposal at year one, so you can see um, you can see the e ecological mitigation area and the planting of it there, and then the proposed lodges and nature wildlife area in that field there, and then again in relation to the seasonal camping at Yuli's farm. And then again, we've got that location at proposed year ten. Um, and obviously, again, you can see that the planting is more established both here and in the ecological mitigation area. Um, and then we're going to look at the last viewpoint, which is viewpoint three from the south and the coastal path. Uh, so again, this is the existing view. So you've got the Haven Holiday Park here. Um, you can see Waterside Holiday Park in there, um, the existing structures that would be removed. And then you have also got the view of the Osmington White Horse there as well. So in this one, you can 
clearly see the proposed um, lodges with the nature wildlife area next to it. Um, and then again, obviously the relationship with the seasonal camping at Yuli's farm. And then you've got the proposed year 10. So the senior landscape architect um, has raised concerns in relation to this viewpoint. Um, in relation to the other viewpoints, um, the senior landscape architect considered that the viewpoints to the north and the west show that the muted colours of the units and proposed planting would be likely to mitigate the landscape visual impact. Um, but in terms of this view, that adverse impact, there, there would be an adverse impact on landscape and visual character, um, both in itself and um, in relation to obviously the existing um, holiday accommodation within this view. However, um, obviously the removal of those proposed pods from the nature wildlife area does mean that this, this gap is retained between kind of the built form and the seasonal camping. Um, and it does also retain that gap with the view up to the Osmington White Horse. Um, you can also see the proposed planting and the use of the muted colours of the lodges in there as well. Um, and of course, it would be viewed into relation, in relation with obviously the Haven Holiday Park um, to the north as well. Uh, the next slide I've got is a CGI image provided by the applicant. Um, and it just obviously shows the proposed lodges with the parking and planting in between, and then that nature wildlife area beyond as well. Uh, in terms of the key planning issues, um, principle of development, um, it is considered to comply with local plan policies SUS2 and Econ7. Um, residential amenity, the proposed units are located, located away from residential properties and it's not considered to result in any significant harm to the neighbouring residential amenity. Um, visual amenity, on balance and subject to conditions, it's considered that the proposal would not have a significant adverse impact. Um, in terms of heritage assets, the revised and reduced scheme removing those um, proposed pods, it is considered it would not result in harm to the significance of the identified heritage assets. Um, highway safety, um, highways have raised no objections. Um, biodiversity, <coughs> both a biodiversity plan and a LEMP have been agreed with um, the NET team. And then the recommendation for this one is for committee to be minded to grant planning permission subject to conditions um, and that the head of planning determine the application accordingly. So in terms of conditions, we've got plans list and time limits, the standard condition. We've got a condition that the units only be used for holiday, um, that they not be a person's sole or main place of residence and that um, an up-to-date register of all owners and occupiers is kept. Um, condition four is for a lighting scheme to be submitted and agreed. Um, we've got a condition for no more than 31 lodges. Um, and we've got a condition that no caravans, lodges or tents are sited on that nature wildlife area so that that gap is ret retained. Um, details of uh, materials to be submitted to ensure that they are those muted colours that um, we've seen in the plans. Um, landscaping to be implemented and for a scheme to be submitted for that enhancement planting for the existing site. Uh, PD rights have been removed in relation to fences, walls or gates, um, car charging for each unit um, and then the surface water conditions and then for the scheme to be in accordance with both the BP and the landscape and ecology management plan there as well. Just got the site wide plan again, but that's it for my presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, Emma. Okay, comprehensive. <coughs> I now invite Jenny Williams to read the written statement submitted to Democratic Services. Over to you, Jenny. Thank you and good morning, everybody. Um, Graham Embley, object. For many years, I have been extremely concerned by the expansion of all the holiday parks in the Preston area, and I feel very strongly that enough is enough. 
Together, we must retain the green spaces that we still have left rather than allow the owners of the parks to develop all over what is undoubtedly a beautiful area. I know all the comments will have been read and taken into account. However, I am worried that only the numbers for or against will have been noted rather than where they have come from. There are many people who do actually live in the area that would like to see no further erosion of the outstanding countryside around Preston. It would benefit not only local people, but also visitors. It's the reason they come to our lovely coastal town. Why allow further encroachment? You can make a difference and stop it now for the sake of us and future generations. Statement on behalf of residents of 21 properties in Bowley's Coveway object. The undersigned residents of Bowley's Coveway object in the strongest terms to the planning application WP 20 00756 FUL. Environment and visual impact. The new development would further erode the beauty of the natural and historical landscape. It is our responsibility to protect this for future generations. Fursey Cliffs were a gift to the community, not as a gift for economic gain. The area is already densely populated with seasonal accommodation, caravans, camping, etc., and more will materially impinge the landscape, further reducing the open land significantly, especially as the lodges, is, lodges are permanent buildings. The lodges won't be hidden by vegetation, particularly in winter. Just labelling it eco style lodges does not offset the overall negative environmental impact. Traffic, human safety. Despite the Highway Authority not raising objections, as residents we have first-hand experience of real traffic issues along the Bowley's Coveway. Bowley's Coveway is a single route with significant congestion all year heightened in the summer. Traffic is already heavy from the 541 caravans, approximately 500 to 1,000 vehicles and commercial service vehicles and buses. Many incidents go unreported and there are several collisions every year with drivers using the pavement to avoid oncoming traffic, endangering pedestrians and cyclists. The highway report suggests using yellow lines. This is unrealistic as people already park on the grass, which police are under-resourced to monitor and control. The construction and servicing of the lodges will create significant traffic from large truck vehicles and generate an additional approximately 60 vehicles daily. Water pressure. Due to significant increase in use by waterside in the summer, the water pressure drops for residents and at weekends there is often no water for several hours. This will only be made worse. Disturbance noise level. The additional weekly seasonal residents, up to 4,000 per week, already have a significant impact on noise. More will exacerbate this. Littering has increased significantly, along with vermin in the area, which are now in gardens and houses along Bowley's Coveway. Even more services will be required, and there are already too many large vehicles. More lodges will only increase the noise and disruption. Economic benefit. The creation of six jobs is negligible. It is proven that Welterside residents bring no economic benefit to the town. The Weymouth Town Council rejected the application in part on this basis. 31 lodges we fear are just the start. And as with the caravans, every few years more and more lodges will be requested. Our concern is that Waterside will continue to expand without control. It is time for the authorities and residents to lead by example make a stand for the environment, safety and well-being of the local community and say no to further development and encourage investment in what we already have. Colin Manning's support. With regards to Waterside's planning application, we are field neighbours and would like to express our support for their application for the following reasons. 31 landscape units of high quality is better than 200 white caravans. Sympathetic and active actions being made extensively for ecology and wildlife. Nigel Westcoin support. With regard to this application, I have Waterside on two sides of my property, but they have always been excellent neighbours. They have 7.23 hectares which could have been deployed and are only going to be to use 2.3 hectares, 32.5%. Their environmental and biodiversity plans have been approved by Dorset Council. 
Visibility from the north side will be minimal, as shown by the photo montages, and will further decrease with tree and shrub planting, let alone greening of the roofs with either lawn or colour, and this will also lessen the impact from the southern side. I would also like to correct Councillor Ferrari's comment that this scheme closes off the last corridor to the fields and foreshore to the east. Yuli's farm is, as the name implies, a farm. It only has a permit for 28 days camping a year. Wildlife transits all the fields, including Waterside, Weymouth Bay, mine and my neighbours next door. Deer, hare, buzzard, hawks, woodpeckers, foxes, voles, weasels, stoats, slow worms and adders are seen dependent on the time of year, even with tourists around. This is an upmarket development with only 31 lodges, the rest of the land left to nature, the like of which is not in the Weymouth and Portland district. I am fully in support of this application. Jonine Ramirez, Agent Support. Thank you for the opportunity to address the planning committee for this application. As you have heard from your planning officer, the proposal is recommended for approval subject to conditions and through a thorough assessment has been carried out to demonstrate that on the planning balance, any minimal harm resulting to the local landscape will be significantly outweighed by the economic and environmental benefits proposed. Waterside Holiday Group is a family business that has been operating for 60 years, providing much needed local support to the local economy by bringing tourists into the area and generating local jobs. The business has taken the decision to pay above the national living wage, demonstrating its commitment to the local economy and community. And this proposal would result in circa six FTE plus seasonal jobs, which will greatly benefit the local community. Water tank storage was also put in place in March 2021 to assist with water pressure issues in the area. The proposal has been amended to include larger ecological areas in the most visually prominent sectors of the site and reduce by 46% the amount of holiday units proposed from 56 to 31. The units have been designed with sustainability, ecology, landscape and appearance in mind to create a pleasing and biodiverse holiday development that would use the latest techniques to be as carbon neutral as possible, including the provision of EV charging points to each unit, green roofs and net zero lodge bases. Landscape improvements to the existing park and a significant 18.6% biodiversity net gain BNG will further benefit the area and mitigate the minimal impact of the lands to the landscape. Contrary to what objectors might interpret from the proposal, detailed evidence and studies have been provided to demonstrate that individually or cumulatively, the proposal would not have a significant impact on landscape, heritage, built environment, ecology, highway or parking. In fact, both the Council's Ecologist and Local Highway Authority recognise that there would be no detrimental impact arising from the proposal. By providing a broad range of alternatives other than the private car, adequate parking to each of the lodges and aiming the development to a segment of the population that has minimal comings and goings, the proposal seeks to minimise traffic, noise disturbance and local parking pressures. The existence of a bus route serving the holiday park along with its location less than 0.5 miles from services, the proposed landscape strategy, improvements to the existing park and the significant provision of BNG would result in development which is as sustainable as possible. For the above reasons and as supported by the professional assessment of your own planning officer, we would kindly request this application be approved. That's the end of the comments, Chair. Thank you. Chairman, you're muted. Thank you, Bill. Now, I now invite Councillor Tony Ferrari, the ward member, to address the committee. Good morning, Tony. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, my name is Tony Ferrari. I am the Weymouth Town Council Ward Member and the Dorset County Council Ward Member for this seat. Um, thank you, for um, Chair, for bringing this to full committee. Um, I think in these restricted access to local government times, good governance being seen to be done as well as being done is a welcome um, step. So thank you for choosing to bring it to committee. Um, 
I have two strands of comment really that, have, that, that, that underpin the problem. The first one, this scheme mitigates to some extent, the second, it doesn't. Um, the original scheme had development up to the border of the Yulee's farm seasonal campsite. What that effectively did was turned all of the fields and the foreshore to the south of the development into a biodiversity island that sealed off from the rest of Dorset for, for the summer months. There is a corridor in this new scheme, but that corridor is narrow. I find it unlikely that this will be regularly accessed by the sorts of animal life described in the earlier comment, hares, deer, etc. When there's a campsite on the right hand side of it and a, a, a chalet on, on the left hand side of it, this is better than the scheme before, but it is still damaging the biodiversity integration of that, that valuable um, area of foreshore and fields south of here, concealing it off the rest of Dorset. However, the more substantive concern of mine is the road, the access and the parking. This road is effectively a very narrow two way road because all summer from dawn to dusk there is parking down the left hand side of it. It's not possible for two vehicles larger than a car to pass each other on this stretch of road. Um, adding more traffic to this and we see a regular series of planning applications at Bowley's Coveway, but we also see a regular arrival of licensing applications where bars, cinemas, all are enhanced, increasing the vehicle traffic up and down that road. And none of them in isolation is, is it's, but it's the continuous aggregation of all of these applications, and this one will bring mo more traffic than any of the others to that road, creates real traffic throughput problems. It also turns into tra parking problems. Just in the last few months, we Dorset Council put in a emergency parking scheme down Bowley's Coveway at the first junction on the right, um, Overcombe Drive, because the parking from Bowley's Coveway had spilled all the way back down there and was pe and people were parking across people's drives and dangerously on corners. Um, more traffic and more vehicles will simply exacerbate that planning problem. This site is a substantial distance from the beach at Bowley's. There's car parking by each of the units. A significant proportion of the use of this site will drive to the beach. And you can tell they do that already from the park because if you walk down the parked cars on the side of the road, they've got parking permits from the holiday park. The in their displayed in the windows so people are driving from this location and parking in this limited parking area and with we, 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 Bowley's Coveway is simply full and we are now every time we bring more development into here we spill parking off down further into into Weymouth and Weymouth Town Council recognised this in their debate and Weymouth Town Council voted uh, against it um, and I support their judgment and um, Thank you for listening to my um, comments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Terry. OK, right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to call on Emma Telford to respond with any salient points she may wish to clarify. Back to you, Emma. Thank you, Chair. There is a couple. Um, I just wanted firstly to highlight the comments from Wessex Water, and that was in response to the comments regarding water pressure. Uh, the full comments are at 8.16 of my report, um, but I'll just read out that Wessex Water consider the network monitoring measures we have in place to um, in place record this local network meets um, the service standards. If it is the applicant's intention to apply for an increase in their flow rate or upsizing of their water connection, um, then an application to Wessex Water would have to be made um, and agree terms and conditions with Wessex Water 
Um, and when considering a request for a commercial supply, Wessex Water must make sure first and foremost that we meet and maintain all existing service levels and potential demand for domestic supply purposes. Um, so that was the first point. Um, and then I just wanted to set out that obviously the proposed lodges are located away from um, any neighbouring residential properties. Um, and then I just wanted to bring your attention to the comments of the economic development team, uh, which are on the update sheet um, rather than in the report. Um, and I was just going to read out one point made in that comment. Um, and that was that it was reasonable to assume better accommodation will lead to increased prices and higher spend both on and off site benefiting the economy of Weymouth and the surrounding areas. Um, and that was in response to the comments about the economic benefits of the scheme. Um, and then I was just going to raise the point that obviously we need to consider the proposal that's subject of this application. And that is obviously the 31 lodges proposed and obviously the, um, the works associated with that. Um, and then our last point I'll make is that the both the biodiversity plan and a landscape and ecology, ecology management plan um, have both been agreed with our natural environment team. Um, but that's all I wanted to come back on. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for clarifying those points. Are there any questions of a technical nature for the case officer or transport development? Um, which uh, uh, I understand we have a representative of in the form of Susan Hetherington. So are there any technical questions? Uh, yes, Chairman, uh, we've got myself, uh, Councillor Dunseith, Councillor Clayton and Councillor Kimber. If you allow me to go first, it's a very quick question. <coughs> on, on condition 11, uh, Emma, yeah, you say there'll be electric vehicle charging points for ev for each caravan stroke lodge. Now, as this application is only for lodges, are you imposing a condition on the existing caravans uh, on, on the adjacent site? No, that condition just covers the proposed 31 um, lodges. The reasoning for doing lodges slash caravans in the condition is although they're titled lodges, they do fall under the definition of a caravan. Um, so that lodges slash caravan is just to cover that the, the 31 proposed as part of this application. Then I am very happy. Thank you very much. OK, uh, Councillor uh, Jean Dunseat, Chairman. Over to you, Jean. Thank, thank <coughs> you, Chairman. Um, I wondered if you could tell me or, or show me where the footpaths go because the mention is made in the report about a footpath I'm not quite sure whether it goes through or alongside this proposed development thank you are you still able to see my presentation yes, yes. we are Emma. Yes. 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 so this slide obviously shows those viewpoints from the LVIA, but it is also showing the public rights of way. Um, so obviously the application site is in here yeah. and there is an existing right of way that does run through Waterside there. Is that footpath 26? Um, That's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head. OK. okay. What would the implication be, Jean, if it was footpath 26? Well, no, it, it's just that footpath 26, I believe, is actually mentioned in the report. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it must be, really. Let's have a look. It's all right, as long as I know where, where it is. That, that's fine, thank you. OK, Jean. Okay. Uh, thank, so thanks. Yeah. Councillor Clayton, Chairman, who has three questions. You may wish to take all of them or you may want to break them up. OK, um, I can save, make that easier, uh, Chair. I now only have one question. The danger of coming in too early with a 
request for questions is that now two of them have been answered. <laughs> um, it is concerned. I noticed in the um, briefing note from Waterside that they say the proposal is for holiday lodges to be occupied as second homes. I'm just wondering, is there a definition of what we mean by second homes and how that relates to holiday lets? Um, I'm just thinking, how does that affect the economic benefits of the development? If there are 31 lodges owned by, say, 31 families as second homes, will they be let out as holiday lets or will they just be used occasionally? If that makes any sense at all. Back to you, on that. Uh, thank you. Um, we wouldn't look to control whether they'd be used as second homes or whether they would be let out um, in terms of our condition, which is condition three, is obviously for that they that they only be used for holiday use only, not a person's sole or main residence. And obviously they keep that up to date register, um, whether that's someone buying it for their own holiday use or letting it out to different people to use for holiday, um, we wouldn't have any control over that. OK, thank you. OK, um, Councillor Kimber, two, two, yeah. two questions, Chairman. OK, uh, over to Paul. Thank you, Chair. I've got the same problem as Councillor Clayton. I think my questions have mainly been answered. My, my concern was traffic entering the site and noise. Um, I just wonder, Emma, if you could show us on, on the map where the nearest homes are from, from, from the point of view of, of the site. And the other one was, I, I was trying to spot the little Roman villa. I was, I, um, I do a bit of, quite a bit of walking around that area. Well, my partner and I seem to walk up around that way quite a few times. So I just wonder if you could show us that as well. Yeah, so in terms of the Roman Villa, the local plan map might be the best one because obviously the um, M is the scheduled monument. I thought it um, was. And that is the, the yeah. villa. Um, and then in terms of residential properties, I'll just go back to the aerial photograph. I think that's probably the best one. Um, so obviously the, the proposed lodges are in here. Um, and then the closest residential properties, I would say, are these down here at Bowley's Coveway. Yeah, roughly about 100, 200 metres. Um, a bit further. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to take a guess. OK. But I'd say they're the closest there. OK, thank you very much. OK, is that, is that you've done, uh, Paul, Councillor Kimber? Yes, that's, that's, every, that's everything. I'd say my, my main thrust of my questions were okay. asked. Um, like you may like to call Councillor Ireland, Chairman, then myself. Okay, okay. Um, Councillor Ireland, Nick, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, EB charging points, is that a condition we're going to. Be... Slightly worried that. The application mentioned is insufficient. I suspect it may disappear. So is that a condition we're going to impose? And my second question, it's, it's been alluded to in, in several of the comments, is um, the water supply and the, the people who live on, on top of Bowley's Cove, they have no water supply for several. Um, so there's obviously an existing problem, which obviously if you're going to have more properties, it's going to exacerbate that issue. So I suspect you're going to tell me that's not a planning issue, but um, is there anything going to be done about that? Can we do something about that? I'm going to take that back to, to Emma to respond. Back to you, Emma. Are you on mute? You're on mute, Emma. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was saying I didn't hear the first part of the question about charging points. I think my, I don't know if it's just me, but my screen froze. It's OK, I can see now there's, a, there's actually a, a, a condition there, isn't there? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, it's covered by um, uh, condition 11. And that is for the charging point for each lodge. Supply problem. Yeah, so that um, 
so at 816 of my report we did consult Wessex Water directly on that um, and that was that kind of the brief comment I read out um, but they obviously set out that the um, the network monitoring measures um, show that the the network at the moment meets the, their standards um, and that if the applicant intends to imply for an increase in their flow or upsizing of their water connection that they would obviously have to agree those terms and conditions with Wessex Water but that the um, first and foremost would be to meet and maintain all existing service levels um, and potential demand for domestic supplies. Um, and that was from Wessex Water. Can I can I just comment on that? Yes. So, uh, I know Councillor Ferrari and Councillor O'Leary are well aware of this, and you know I have spoken to residents in in that area, and they do have occasions when they do have no water supply. That that's a fact. So for Wessex Water to say the water supply is is you know sufficient is obviously incorrect because I don't think any of us would accept you know regular water shortages. It seems that we should be doing more. All, all planning applications are subjected to consultations, and I think uh, you know we we have to take the consultee's word that in fact things are covered as they should be. But uh, do you want to add to that, Emma? Uh, no. Right. Okay, myself then, Chairman. Um, yeah, over to you in, then. In Councillor Ferrari, in Councillor Ferrari, <coughs> for, 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 uh, in Councillor Ferrari's submission. Uh, he, he said, and I quote, two vehicles wider than a car cannot pass. So we don't seem to have a problem in cars passing um, Bowley's Coveway, uh, as, 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 as has been mentioned previously. I, I'd, I'd like to uh, take a comment, if I may, from the, the highways officer uh, along those lines of the two vehicles wider than a car cannot pass. Uh, element. Do you want to take that up, uh, Susan? Susan Hedrington, asset here. She's uh, she's the transport development uh, representative. Um, yes. Good morning, Chairman and members of the committee. Um, I'm Susan Hedrington. I'm the engineer in transport development. And thank you very much for your question, Deputy Chair. Um, so, in respect of the capacity uh, for traffic flows. The, um, the carriageway is seven metres wide. Um, so for a vehicle that's parked up, it would leave uh, five and a half metres. Um, and five and a half metres is sufficient for two HGVs to pass. Um, so hopefully that answers that element. Thank you. Thank just, you. just a point to clear up. Uh, thank you, Susan. So there is really, I don't think, of what you've said there, a problem exists in passing uh, parked vehicles uh, in either direction. Would that be a fair assumption? Back to you, Susan. Sorry, yes, um, just going back to you. Yeah, that that's the, the correct assumption. So there is uh, there is enough capacity there um, and clearance for, for vehicles to okay. um, pass and repass on the public highway. OK, thank you very much. Um, Councillor John Worth, Chairman. OK, OK, John, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yeah, I'm sure back in the officer's report there was some mention of a new water tank that had been installed at the park recently to help with uh, the water supply problem. Um, can you just check with the officer that that's uh, that actually I'm not dreaming and that was actually part of her report? Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. I'm going to take that back to Emma to see if she's actually covered that. Um, I don't think that was included as part. Sorry, I don't think that was included as part of my report. I think that was included in the briefing note that was sent round um, by the agent and applicant. Right. Um, that was sent round separately. I think that's been taken from there. Your belief is correct, Emma. That was in the briefing note. OK, I wasn't dreaming, but I was dreaming it was Emma that said it. Thank you. OK. OK, Chairman, um, 
no no further questions on I've got a, I've got I've got a response well I've actually looked up on the report the comments made by councillor Danseeth regarding the uh, footpath and it said it states that the the proposed works are in the vicinity of the footpath 25 Weymouth however uh, the officer is unaware of any unrecorded unrecorded paths that may be affected by the development so I don't know if that answers your query, uh, uh, Councillor Dancy. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman. I mean, I can see that a footpath actually does go through almost the centre of the site. And there's another one that would approach from the south and would go through. It's hard to say. That also goes through the site and uh, looks as though it skirts it. So I'm I'm quite happy. Thank you very much for that. Okay, thank, thank you. Just for clarity, much. Emma, are any of the footpaths shown on the on the presentation being impinged upon by this proposed development? Well, it states not uh, in the in the report, uh, Bill. But I can I can get Emma to uh, to confirm yeah. that. Just for no. clarity. No, they won't be. Thank you very much. OK, Chairman, you're free to move on. OK, before I open the debate, members, may I remind you to direct any questions or remarks through the chair and I will invite members to speak in turn. Requests to speak uh, need to be made via the virtual chat facility. Uh, can I can also remind members that the chat facility is for the smooth running of the meeting and must not be used for discussions on the merits of an application. Please keep microphones on mute when not speaking to preserve audio quality. And I can now open the uh, meeting for open debate. Who do we have to speak, uh, Bill? Anyone? Absolutely nobody, Chairman. Right. OK, in that case, uh, I will seek a proposal. And I take propose by... acceptance, Chairman. Adam? I propose acceptance. OK, I've got, a, I've got a proposal for acceptance from uh, Councillor Bill Pipe. Do I have a seconder? I would yeah. second it, Councillor Susan Cocking. OK, Susan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Susan. Members, we have a proposal and a seconder uh, for... Chairman, uh, if uh, I, I, I thought, excuse me, Chairman, but I thought Councillor O'Leary was going to speak. Uh, no, he's not. Oh, OK. No, he's he, he's 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 uh, submitted a, a declaration of interest, but he's not participating in the debate or the vote. He he deemed himself to be predetermined, Jean, so he's he's taken himself off the debate. Thank so you. Taking part at all. Thank you. He will not vote. OK, so we have a, a proposer and a seconder uh, uh, and I will now take a vote by roll call. And I'll uh, chairman. Up. Chairman, okay. sorry, uh, Councillor Kimber would like to speak. OK, all right, you come on in. Uh, uh, Councillor Kimber, would you like to say a word? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm, uh, like all decisions, nothing is black and white. It's lighter and darker, shades of grey. Um, part of the, um, I, I would like for us uh, to note the water pressure up there for the residents, if we can. I know I'm straying out of the planning application, but I'm only thinking of uh, emergencies in that area, if there should be an emergency. So part of my, my, my I'm happy to support the, uh, what's been moved and seconded, but if the note could be sent to the water authorities that we're concerned about the pressure up there for emergencies. Thank you. I'm going to take that back to Emma. I can't. I, I don't think that can be made as a condition, but I'll I'll get her comments over to you, Emma. Um, in consulting um, Wessex Water, we obviously did make them aware of the concerns that were being raised, um, and that response um, I read out is what they came back with in in response to that. Bed. OK, uh, are you happy with that? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, 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 I just think it's something that we should get uh, just a, a, a note from them to say that there is nothing wrong 
uh, with the pressure up there, we can deal with, you know, it's sufficient for emergencies. That's my, uh, my that's my only point. Thank you. Yeah, well, well, well duly noted, uh, uh, Councillor Kimber. Right, free to move to the vote, Chairman. OK, I'm going to move to the vote now. <coughs> Start off with Councillor Dave Bowell. Yes, Chair, I'm minded to approve. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Kerwin Clayton. Um, yes, approved, Chair. OK, for clarity, Councillor Susan Cocking. Approved, Chair, minded to. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jean Dancer. Approved, Chair. Thank you. For clarity, Councillor Bill Pike. Four, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Nick Ireland. Four, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Paul Kimber. Uh, four, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Kate Weller. Four. Thank you. Councillor Sarah William. Four. Councillor John Warren. Minded to approve, Chairman. And I'm uh, uh, in favour as well, and that makes a unanimous decision. So I now ask Anna Lee to make the formal decision on this particular item. Over to you, Anna. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I confirm that I heard the full presentation um, and the members' questions and, and debate, and this application will be approved subject to conditions in line with the committee's minded to resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Anna. Right, that concludes the, the, uh, the planning applications. Uh, item five on the agenda is urgent items. I have uh, had no prior notification of any item of business which is considered to be urgent pursuant to section uh, uh, 100B, 4B of the Local Government Act 1972. And the last item on the agenda is exempt business and I've had no prior notification of any item viewed as likely to disclose exempt information within the meaning of paragraph 3 of the Schedule 12A for the Local Government Act 1972 as amended. Committee, I believe that uh, concludes the meeting. Thank you very much indeed, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. bye. bye.